I'm Samantha Deichter for InvestmentPitch.com. In the ticker talk you are about to see, Ted Ohashi interviews Dr. George Adams, President and CEO of VentraPoint Diagnostics, listed as VPT on the Toronto Venture Exchange. VPT is a medical technology company that has a proprietary and patented method for creating accurate 3D images of the heart faster, better, cheaper, and more conveniently than existing alternatives. This application alone is an estimated $2 billion market. The technology has been approved in Europe and Canada, and with the completion of clinical trials now underway, approval for the U.S. is expected by year's end. The host, Ted Ohashi, said to me that VenturePoint has all of the characteristics he used to look for when he worked as a professional securities analyst and subsequently as a mutual fund portfolio manager. I hope you enjoy the interview. I think it will be well worth your time. From the offices of Investment Pitch, this is Ticker Talk, and I'm Ted Ohashi. I'm pleased to have with me today Dr. George Adams, President and CEO of VentraPoint. VentraPoint is a medical technology company, and we're very pleased to have George with us today. Last fall, or last year, I guess, when VentraPoint went out looking for uh, a president and CEO, um, how did they find you, and, and what was it that you brought to the table that satisfied what they were looking for? Well, so I, one of the people on the board, one of the directors uh, knew me and, and, and I had just finished with my previous company and I was taking the summer off. So he called me up and said, are you interested in getting back into the saddle again? I've done six companies before this. So I said, no, go away. Uh, and then uh, he called me back a little later and said, come on. So I came out. I took a look at the opportunity. It's a, a cardiovascular diagnostics opportunity, which is what I do. And uh, it's just an overwhelming opportunity, so I said I would sign them. So what were they looking for from you? Well, they were looking for somebody to direct the company and raise the capital they need, somebody with capital, you know, public market experience, so that, uh, you know, have an investor group that gets together. And, and uh, it's really a company. The technology was done and the product was read, almost ready to go. It really was a matter of uh, raising enough capital to start deploying it into the marketplace and see how well it did. And, and what did you see there that attracted you to the situation? Was it those things that you just mentioned? Well, I saw a company that you know, had been gone through the first valley of death, which is you, know, you get a technology out of a university, you got to tame it into a product and hope you get to the market before the market's moved on. Really. Right. And so, yes, the, uh, the op it was just an overwhelming, here's somebody that created something absolutely unique that met an unmet need and it was ready to go. And all it really needed was a little bit of money and to get out there and start showing people how good it was. So th those are rare opportunities uh, in the medical world. And so I just thought that's something I could certainly accomplish. So VentraPoint basically has a technology that um, creates a 3D image of the heart, is that? Right, so, so you, you can look at somebody's heart with using, using an x-ray machine or an MRI machine or with an ultrasound machine. Right. The ultrasound is very benign, you can use it on anybody, anywhere, anyhow, very quick, very easy. MRI is a little bit more high tech, you have to have, go to a special room, you have to build a special wing in the hospital to get, and can't have any metal anywhere inside you or you can't go to an MRI. And of course x-rays are you can't do too many x-rays before you get in trouble. So uh, ultrasound is really the best and most universal imaging tool. And VentryPoint is able to take these 2D, multiple 2D images and all different slices and create a three-dimensional image of what your heart actually looks like. How does it actually do this? So we actually like to call ourselves the first dot imaging company in the world. We use dots. And so I'd like to show you a little video of exactly how we do it. Okay? Right. So in this video, you'll see a slice through the heart. It's actually upside down and mirrored backwards. So the left side is actually the right side, and the top is actually the bottom. But this is how cardiologists view these things. And what we do is you get the cardiologist to put dots, identify things on the package, on the image. And once they get about 20 dots in there, we actually record where those dots are in three-dimensional space. So we have a GPS system in the system, and we get this three-dimensional constellation of dots, which absolutely defines the shape of that heart. 
We then go send those, the, the GPS information to our database and it comes back with a three-dimensional reconstruction of what, in this case, the right side of the heart looks like. And the doctor can look at that, rotate it in space and say, yeah, okay, that, that's a normal heart. Oh, that's a very sick heart. Um, and, but uh, one of the features we built into the program is you can touch on any dot and when, did, when you do that, you get both images. You get the three-dimensional image as well as the 2D slice through the heart. So cardiologists and sonographers have never seen this before. They're used to just looking at 2D or 3D, never the two at the same time. This is a great learning tool. They learn to really imagine and visualize what the heart looks like. And it's a great quality control tool because they can say, yes, that's exactly where I thought the heart was in that 2D, blurry 2D image. So it's all about putting dots on a 2D image and then locating those dots in three-dimensional space so that you get an absolutely accurate picture, three-dimensional picture of the heart. Can you compare that, uh, the VentraPoint system uh, and the process with, say, an MRI, for example? Right, so for an MRI, you would do the same thing. You would take slices through the heart, so when you're lying in the MRI, but the MRI takes an hour. You've got to lie in this machine for 50 minutes while they move the magnets, bang, 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 and if you move, you've got to start over. So that's a very claustrophobic, and a, and a lot of people don't make it the whole hour. Uh, on top of that, I mean, it, you've got to come back for a second appointment, whereas in this case, it's ultrasound. So you, the doctor says, you know, I, your heart sounds a little funny. Let's just go have a look. Step in my, the next door, you know, and they can have a look at it right there so you don't have to go back for a second or a third visit. Um, and obviously, it's much cheaper, uh, less expensive to do ultrasound. And so what we, you know, we can get you a absolute, perfectly accurate image of your heart and I'll do all the calculations on volumes and injection fractions and cardiac outputs in 10 minutes. So cheaper, faster, better? Cheaper, faster, better, more convenient and, and, and your doctor, your cardiologist can do it and instead of having to call up the radiologist. What, what part of the uh, VentraPoint system is proprietary? So that we spent about five years building the database with all the possible shapes that you can have in a heart. So that's a database that we own. We bought all those images. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the whole software algorithm, the, the process it goes through is take these, define the little pieces of hearts that are in the database and stitch them together into, into a, a new heart, which is exactly like the one you've got. That's the proprietary magic and it's patented. And we also have a lot of proprietary uh, you know, knowledge in there that, uh, that we've developed over the years. Now you're, you're starting with hearts. What, what's, the, what's the market potential for this technology in the cardiac market? Right, so we started out looking at blue babies, tetralogy of Fallot or congenital heart disease in general, so because the pediatric cardiologists have to deal with that. If you have a problem with your heart and you're a baby, it's the right side of your heart. If you have a problem with the left side, you don't get born. So unfortunately, as you get older, you you do in the left side of your heart, so all the adult cardiologists are focused on the left side of the heart. So the people who really need a entry point system right now and have wanted one for 20 years are the pediatric cardiologists. So that's where you go. That's about a $200 million market, okay? But the really very large market is back in the, uh, the right side, but in the adult. So people have pulmonary hypertension, high blood pressure on the right side of the heart. So they have trouble pumping blood through their lungs to feed the blood into the left side of the heart where it gets pumped out to the rest of the body. That's a much bigger, there are 20 million people in North America who have breathing problems, asthma or smoking or cancer or whatever, and they are at risk for having pulmonary hypertension and dying from a heart attack on the right side of the heart. And, the only, and there's no way to look at the right side of the heart except for this procedure. So that is actually a billion to two billion dollar market for pulmonary hypertension. That's billion with a B. B, yeah, billion with a B, yeah. Okay. It's a big market. Uh, that's the one that all the, you know, when we talk to the larger companies in the world, the General Electrics and the Philips and the Siemens and the Toshibas of the world, who are all the top four people who make not only MRIs but X-rays and ultrasound equipment, uh, that's the one that they've never been able to crack. It's the pulmonary hypertension they've never been able to figure out. Now, from an, from an investor's point of view or from a potential investor's point of view, um, let, let's talk about some of the risks. Um, is there a technology risk here now? No. We've, we've built the machine, we've deployed it, we have the world's expert cardiologists who've been using it and they're, they've written the papers up and they've submitted them for publication. I would say there's no technology risk left in this company whatsoever on this product. Right. The risk 
uh, is all market adoption risk and and really competition. And we don't have any competition because nobody's in 20 years of trying, no one's been able to figure out how to look at these very blurry images and get a computer to figure out where, which part is the heart and which part is blur. And so uh, we don't have, it, it, again, that one of the things that uh, attracted me to the company was a product ready to go and a very much unmet need with an application in pulmonary hypertension that we have to build a database for and no competition in sight whatsoever. So that, that's a pretty unique opportunity. George, technologies like this uh, need approvals. Um, in the U.S., what is it, the FDA? Yes. Um, and Canada has its own system in Europe. Well, where do you stand with approvals? So we're fully approved for all clinical applications for the right heart in Europe, through a CE mark, and in Canada, Health and Welfare Canada. We are in a process with the FDA to gather that approved. We need to do some more clinical studies in an American center. To, to facilitate that, we deploy two machines in the, in the United States, one in Omaha, Nebraska, and one in Portland, Oregon, both in pediatric hospitals. Again, the first application will be pediatric, uh, pediatrics, and so we're in a position now to go ahead and run those clinical trials. We just have to have a meeting with the FDA and, and be sure we're doing exactly what they want us to do and that we'll be able to convince them of the, uh, of the and it has to be substantially equivalent. The, you know, it's a 510K, so it's only a 90-day process. So you, you, once you submit the, the clinical information, the FDA tells you within 90 days whether it, it, you're, you're approved or not. And that approval might come? I think we can get the clinical trials done this summer and get the approval by the end of the year. Okay, okay. And the, the, the Canadian um, uh, application is Sick Kids in Toronto? It's fully approved, yeah. Yep. So, Sick Children's in Toronto was the first Canadian uh, site that we enabled, and they did some research with it. Um, and, and what about the, the business risk here? I mean, you know, all we hear about these days is hospitals and budgets and government spending and all of that. I mean, um, who's the decision maker in, in terms of purchasing the equipment? And, you know, is this something that will be a priority in a hospital's budget? It will be, because 10% of all hospital admissions are for cardiac patients. Ten okay? yeah. percent. Yeah. So every tenth person comes in for a heart, with a heart problem. And, you know, I mean, uh, cancer just went past heart disease in terms of the number one killer, but heart disease is still the number two. And, right. and so there's, you know, the cardiologist makes the decision if he, needs a, if he needs a better tool. In this case, it's a wonderful situation because the MRI machine is 100 percent used. And, you know, spending an hour on an MRI for one patient is a pretty expensive thing to do with an MRI if you don't have to do it. In the same hour, they can do 10 or 15 people with breast cancer or all sorts of other things because they just want quick images and they're out, right? So yeah, in this case, it's more about liberating the MRI machine to get on with treating large numbers of patients and, and getting the same information from the cardiac from ultrasound. That's so, it's not about, this is about better health care all the way around because you liberate a good expense being to do something it can only do and it's cheaper to do the, the ultrasound and uh, and so we haven't have seen any problems with the, our uh, getting it as every cardiologist we've ever shown the system to said okay send me a quote um, right. I want one it's right. just like that it's just uh, anyway we've done the company hasn't had the resources to do a lot of marketing Right. And yet we have dozens and dozens of people who want these machines. We only have 10 of them, so we have to be very selective about where we put them because we need those 10 to be in the very high-end cardiac centers so we can run multiple clinical trials and submit them to the FDA. The, the units that are in use right now, are you getting feedback from those centers? Yes, they love it. They just it exceeds their expectations. And they have very high expectations from looking at the video. Every one of our users is, is a keynote speaker of a major conference in the next six months, and they're all taking our slides and our data there to talk about them. Yeah. Um, share with us your vision for VentorPoint over the next, say, three to five years. What, what do you see happening? So I would imagine that VentorPoint will be acquired sometime in the next two years, I would say, because everybody, every cardiologist in the world has a 2D echo machine that was sold to them by one of the big three, either General Electric or Philips or, or Toshiba. And so they, you know, they know, all know where those machines are and we're a, a way to make those machines far more productive. 
uh, and we won't, you know, to build out a global reach will be a very long and arduous process, and they already have it. So we will be acquired probably as soon as we get up to maybe 100 customers. And, and what is your financial position right now? Do you need money? Are you raising money? Yeah, we, we uh, as I said, I, I came in six months ago and we just got enough money to build the machines and get them out there and make sure they were all functioning well and, and people were happy with them and they were ready to go. And we've proven that to ourselves now. So now we need to raise a bit of money to scale the company so we can deploy 100 to 120 machines next year, starting in the fall of this year. So, and to do the marketing that goes with that. Although I will say that uh, word of mouth is doing a wonderful job for marketing for us. So we already have dozens and dozens of hospitals and cardiologists who are uh, in the process of ordering a machine. Yeah. Well, George, thank you very much for coming in and, uh, and sharing the VentraPoint story with us. Thank you for having me, Ted. It's been a pleasure. From the offices of Investment Pitch for Ticker Talk, I'm Ted Ohashi.